Johnny and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business? We can help. And King of Floors, your vinyl, laminate, and engineered flooring superstore. It is Wednesday, and all of our guests on Wednesday, sponsored by the O's marketing team at Royal LePage. They will find your next home in Nanaimo, Nanus Bay, Parksville, and Qualicum Beach. Find out more at wearerealestate.com. Calm, lightning up two one on the uh, the hurricanes. Another two nothing. Another two two nothing. Another two one uh, victory. They've had those uh, uh, back to back, and like you say, Rick, tap up two nothing on the uh, hurricanes. As we're joined now by NHL analyst John S- uh, Shannon. How are you, sir? Good boy, you. Good, good, good. Now you texted me some band name suggestions uh, last <laughs> week, and, and I have to I have to lay the rules out for you, John. It has to come within the within the body of a conversation, just off the cuff. Just uh, so, sort of uh, like, for instance, I was talking about how my dad used to call an outhouse the honey house. That became a, a, a band yeah. name. So, yeah. so there, there are the rules for you. you, you okay. it doesn't, it, like yeah. everything else on this show, you can't think too much. So, well, it, it, so it's okay. Rick's distracted anyway by his computer, so it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get distracted quite a bit, John. I think you know that. <laughs> <laughs> it's an issue. Trust me, John. Hey, so uh, the Leafs have their media availability uh, today. Uh, how do you explain their ouster? And I asked Jeff this question as well. How do you explain their ouster at the hands uh, of the Habs in seven? Well, I, I you know, I, I think it's it's the intangibles of what playoff hockey is all about. That that you, if any of us have watched all the other series, uh, there's a ton of pushback, and the Leafs had none absolutely none it was you know it was like that uh, those those games you used to have when you were seven years old and the buzzer would go and the guys would skate to the bench that's what the maple Leafs did hmm. you know you know the buzzer would go the Leafs would skate to the bench there was there was absolutely no level of what i would describe as as character uh and and that's not hmm. a knock at the guys as uh, with their ability but we all talk about playoff hockey being different and playoff hockey having that pushback. There was no, there was no pushback. So I think the frustration for a lot of Maple Leaf fans was that at the same time as game seven going on in Toronto, where the Islanders playing in Boston and the, the character of the game was dictated by two guys for the Islanders, Matt Martin and Leo Camara, oh, both made both Maple Leafs that they got rid of. Uh, and and I, I think that when you look at that, that's the type of player you need. I'm not talking about being dirty. I'm not talking about creating fights. But you guys know. Mm-hmm. Look at the look, look at the Canucks when they went uh, to the Stanley Cup final. You know, Bieksa was was a little bit of a chippy guy. Burroughs was a chippy guy. The Leafs have none of that. None yeah. of that. Yeah. They got, they yeah, got... but Wayne Simmons, so John, that's why they got him. Like I said, there was none of that. Ooh. Yeah. They didn't get no, on the ice. Yeah. The way, no, there was there was none. I mean, last summer the Maple Leafs had a choice between Corey Perry and Wayne Simmons, and they chose Wayne Simmons over Corey Perry. And who <laughs> has the last laugh? They got rid of Lou too. Let's not forget that, uh, John. Spe- speaking of the uh, Islanders, yeah. so is this Good a point. matter, uh, uh, John? We we talk about this a lot. How you know, uh, you know, teams that do well in the playoffs have to lose. And go through some tough times before they can win. Is that uh, is this a case of that, or do the Leafs need to make changes if they can with their salary structure? Uh, well, I mean, how, how many how many years are we going to ask the same refrain, Donnie? Yeah, uh, this is this is now three years in a row with this group of guys. Uh, so from from that perspective, that becomes uh, the real challenge. And, and how long how long does, does ownership wait? How patient can they be? Uh, you, you know, we're old enough to remember that the, you know, the famous chant at Madison Square Garden was 1940 because it was 54 years between Stanley Cups. Well, this is a minimum of 55 years now in Toronto between 67 yeah. and potentially even next year. And there's no guarantee, obviously, of 2022. That's 55 years for this franchise between Stanley Cups. They didn't even get out of the first round this year, and there's no guarantee they're going to get out of the uh, out of the first round next year if they. Because uh, remember, Florida and Tampa are coming back into this division yep. 
with the Bruins, you know, and Montreal and Ottawa's gotten better. You know, this is this is going to be a much more difficult division to play in next year than the Canadian division was for the Maple Leafs this year. Okay, John, Winnipeg, Montreal. But before we get to that, I, I got to read a text from Delaney's OK Tyron Langley inbox. This was sent to us last week. Uh, I didn't get it in, but I'm going to get it in today. Ask John about the Winnipeg Jets wipeouts in the 1980s. Mike O'Brien. Whiteouts. Whiteouts. What did I say? Whiteouts. It wasn't a wipeout. It was a wipeout. Oh, a wipeout. That's what I said. I, I got it right. Anyways, listen, that's from Mike O'Brien, <laughs> the Jets uh, PA guy from 1982 to 88. He texted us that. You know, the, it's, the problem was that every time in the in the 80s when the Jets had the wipeout, they never won the series. They never won it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. yeah. So, well, they played the Oilers so, a lot, though. That, that, that you know, well, that didn't was help. a big reason. That didn't help. No. And, well, and they were, you know, that was... That was in a time when the, the three best teams in hockey might have been on the prairies. When you yeah. think of Calgary and Calgary. Edmonton and, yep. and Winnipeg, and Winnipeg sitting there with maybe the second best player in hockey through that period of time, Dale Howardchuk, they just couldn't get, even get out of the old fight division. Yeah. Who do you like, uh, Winnipeg, Montreal? I like I like Winnipeg. Uh, I, I really do. I, I think that uh, their depth up front, when you think of those 12 forwards, when you can move a guy like Andrew Kopp, uh, to the third line to play with Adam Lowry and Mason Tappleton. That is something that every other general manager in the league would just drool over. Hmm. Uh, and, 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 and I tell you what, you know, their fourth line with Thompson, with Perot and Lewis will, will play a factor in this series too. So I, I do like the depth of forwards uh, with the Jets to be the difference maker. And I don't think there'll be much difference between Connor Hellebuck and Carey Price. So all of a sudden it's advantage Jets. Yeah. Hey, uh, John, um, I always like to ask you, Mr. Television, television questions. Um, we got to see several NBC broadcasts up here uh, during the, these playoffs. As their deal expires with the National Hockey League, what's your opinion of the job that company, NBC, has done with NHL broadcasts over the last 10 years? Oh, I think they've been magnificent. Yeah. Uh, I, I think they have been an unbelievable partner. Uh, you know, it really it really started for NBC uh, in 2002 at the Salt Lake Olympics uh, when Canada played USA in that gold medal game, uh, and uh, and the partnership uh, between Gary Bettman and the people at NBC. It happened that one of the guys there was a guy named Ken Shanzer who happened to go to university Cornell uh, with Bettman, and it uh, it created a, a solid partnership out of the work start in 2004 five. Uh, and I think NBC did everything in their powers to to grow the game, make the game better. There was a ton of coverage. There was uh, there was a ton of of uh, exposure, even on even on non hockey events, whether it was on Jimmy Fallon or yep. the Today yeah. Show. NBC NBC did a hell of a job. Yep. NBC did a hell of a job, and unfortunately, they chose uh, with with math. They chose to say that the NHL rights are only worth a certain amount. And, Gary was able to get a lot more money uh, on the open market for those same rights. So yeah. it, it's too bad. Uh, but you know what? They're, they're even doing a pretty good job right now uh, in their lame duck here. I think they've really worked hard at it. Uh, I, 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 I totally agree. I think the move to the, uh, TNT and ESPN makes sense, but that's taken nothing away from the job NBC has done. Hey, John, thanks for this. We'll talk to you next week. Have a great day, boys.